So I'm going to tell you how buying Magic the Gathering collections has kind of ruined my life. During the beginning of COVID-19, I bought some pretty massive collections. Now at that point in time, there was, the, there was actually no buy list. So we just have to base it on eBay finished and then we split the eBay fee and that's how we came to the $200 or less most of the blues were around 200. I think Volcanic was like 195. And I bought uh, 200 dual lands at that price point. And then I continued to buy, continued to buy the dual lands. I remember Underground C, the buy list was up to 550 and then you know, 600 because I was buying them at 550 and I still have them at 550. Um, I always lived by one thing and this is what ruined me was I thought the buy list could not be cracked. Meaning as long as, you know, it's card kingdom, you, you base it off some legitimate buy list. Again, I'm not saying like some local stores buy list where some card is insanely priced. No, no, no. I'm talking about a legitimate buy list. Uh, the legitimate buy list, by the way, I would consider legitimate would be a strike zone online. That's local to me. Uh, it would be uh, maybe sometimes ABU games, but I, I'm not a big fan of their buy list. Card Kingdom, Star City Games, Channel File Bowl before it got bought out. And then of course, like if you want to do eBay comps and something and you want to do a percentage of eBay comps, I'm okay with that as well. David Adams has a very high buy list for boxes because they have a box breaking channel. And so they have a utility. They can actually move the box uh, a lot faster than a normal store. Uh, also, uh, what what what's that? The cool Stuff. Cool Stuff Inc. has a very high buy. So I, I respect all their buy list. And the concept I had, and I always had this about buy list, even when I was maybe in law school or in, in uh, high school, or even if Card Kingdom says, I'll pay you $5 for the card, that gives Card Kingdom enough margins on the card that even if the card fell and collapsed in price, it would still be okay. That was my belief. And I've held on to this belief all the way up until recently. And then that belief got shattered because that turned out not to be true, that the cards could lose a apocalyptical amount of money and go way below buy list. And that's uh, dual lands, that's power, that's all the things I'm looking at right now. And it's, it's bad. Um, it's very bad. Um, and I, I, you don't need to tell me. Like, I know I have gold span dragons, I have, you know, lilies and uh, veils, and I, I have all these cards that continuously get reprinted and remastered and remastered and remastered. I mean, it's kind of like if a card's worth over $50, it will be reprinted in the next set. You're just hoping that it's not reprinted in the next um, standard set. You're just hoping it's reprinted in the remastered set, so at least it can hold a tiny bit of value. My um, main takeaway is Magic is no longer investable. Um, I also would say that reserve lists, I've always held the reserve list like as sacred as well. And when you combine the two, reserve lists and buy list, you know, that's felt very safe to me. I've never seen prices collapse the way they have collapsed recently. And it's not even junky cards, it's, it's high tier cards, it's dual lands. There are some dual lands buy listing under 200 right now, under 150 on Card Kingdom. And that's scary, that, it's very scary to me because um, that sounds like a price that's too good, but people keep asking me, oh, do you want to do it? Do you want? And the amount of emails I get. So I got, no, I, I wouldn't call it greedy, but I got carried away. We're buying these cards. And at some point in time, I just realized it was trash. That the, you know, 400 dual lands, like does anyone need that many? No, like the 401 dual land I would have has no meaning to me. It doesn't, you know, I don't even look at my dual lands. They're at the vault somewhere in my, in my local bank. So um, it was a big realization that I had just wasted a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of my life collecting something that I truly didn't enjoy at that point in time. Um, I'm back to opening packs. I love opening packs. I'm addicted to opening packs. That's enjoyment for me. It uh, feels like gambling, and you guys know I love gambling. If it's gotcha games, it's poker, whatever, blackjack, whatever it is, right? Uh, in the past, before I was doing all the YouTube stuff, I actually had so many gambling points at the Rio 
that I would have, be able to get a penthouse for free. Uh, so I was considered like a semi okay whale, you know, obviously it wasn't peak times, but it was nice nonetheless. And it was a really nice experience. You have your own special card to get to the penthouse. Uh, so that means that no one else can get there that like, if you are just a regular resident, you, you, there, you need a card and that was kind of cool. So I've spent hundreds of thousands, if not, you know, I mean a lot. Not, I'm, I'm thinking, is it a million? Is it a quarter, half a million? I don't know what the actual number is. And I didn't have any enjoyment from it. I enjoy opening packs. I enjoy chasing cards like Liliana de Veil. I enjoy that. And people say, oh, aren't you losing money? Yeah, I am, but I'm having fun doing so. So I enjoy opening packs and getting hits and getting excited. And uh, that to me is why I play, I, I even open magic packs. Um, collecting and buy listing is no fun, you know, and it's not even economically at this point, a good idea. Um, so that's the honest truth is I'm going to open more packs. You know, you've seen this channel has become like a pack opening. I have a whole store. I have a legit, an entire store store. Um, and I get, I have two distributors worth of packs to open a month if I want to. And I think I want to, because that is actually a lot more fun. And you might think, oh, well, so when I'm buy listing shit, like it's 10,000, it's 15,000, another 20,000. The sealed collection was 27,000. Um, the uh, Lotus and the power, the Lotus and the, from that one guy was like 12 and a half, maybe 13,000. When you're buy listing this stuff, even though you supposedly are getting good deals, supposedly at the time, the, the, they come out in such chunks of money that there's no way I can open $13,000 of cards in a day. But there is a way, and I have purchased a $27,000 sealed collection, which is upstairs right now, and a Black Lotus on the same day. That's 40,000, that's 40K in one day. So I don't actually have much enjoyment from looking at my Black Lotus, to be honest with you. It's just nice that I have one. Uh, I don't get much enjoyment from my sealed boxes that I'm supposed to be investment and I have a lot more enjoyment opening them, honestly. Like, you know, I think War of Spark is a fun set. If I open it, yeah, I lose a lot of money, but I have a lot of fun with it. So that's where I am right now, just like mentally, is I'm just bored and I'm exhausted and I'm, I, I put so much money in collecting cards that people told me are valuable that, oh, here, this is a good deal, that's a good deal, buy this collection, and I don't give a shit about them. Because I don't even see them, they're in a vault somewhere. As opposed to like opening Pokemon packs and magic packs, I mean, real real talk, that's fun stuff, man. It's like pulling a slot machine. <laughs> it's fun. And you know, I, I mean, you're down. I mean, you, you're, you're going to a casino, you know you're gonna lose money, you might as well have fun. It's kind of the emotional highs, and people ask me this all the time, in fact, um, this is a very good question is like, I make a shit ton per hour. So I, I make, I run a business, I make a decent amount of money and I'm well off. I would say I'm well off, right? You still, when you still hit, when you hit that Espeon Max alt art or you hit an Urza or, you know, in the Brothers War, I still feel it. I still feel like I'm a kid. I'm just like, wow, nice. Or, you know, I hit the, there was one pack, um, that I hit like $80 of value in one pack. Yeah, I was like, ah, <laughs> you know, so like, it's not, it's not that like, okay, so it's the same where like the rich people, like, you know, how uh, Warren Buffett eats at the same diner. It's, it's like, and he uses McDonald's coupons and he likes McDonald's a lot. It's, it's not the fact that you can't eat better or that you can't like open better. It's the fact that it's fun. And I think a lot of people forgot that when they're doing the hobby, for the hobby. The hobby shouldn't be about money. Like I don't, I made a massive mistake. And the mistake I made was I tried to make money from the hobby. That's not the correct mindset because you're only gonna lose money. Bye guys.